Okay, it's loading. Okay, okay we're live, Janine. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Oh, actually, it's going to start in three seconds. Okay, now we're really live. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Rocky Dodia, um, and I am coming from Erickson Institute's Early Math Collaborative, and I'm here with my lovely colleague, Janine. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm Janine Brownell, and I'm so excited to spend a little time chatting with you about photos. Absolutely. And we are presenting live from Chicago, Illinois. Sorry, I had to do that. I'm never going to be on SNL, but I am live right now. Uh, and we're, we really are thrilled to share um, our presentation with you all. And for those of you that don't know, Erickson Institute, we are a graduate school named after Eric Erickson, who is a pioneer in developmental psychology. And child development informs everything that we do. Our institute is focused on birth to eight years old. Um, and at the Early Math Collaborative, we conduct research, we provide professional development for educators serving children and families birth to eight. And Janine, can you believe we've been around for 15 years okay. um, and we've published four books. So as you can see, our first book was the Big Ideas book. Um, hopefully it's looking familiar to some of you all. It focuses on preschool and kindergarten. And our newest book is Precursor Math Concepts um, for Infants and Toddlers. And our authors, Mary Hinesbury and Jackie Chen spoke earlier at this symposium on the work that they present in the book. And if you're interested in learning more about Erickson Institute, please do look us up online and subscribe to the Early Math Collaborative's monthly newsletter where Janine and I just publish an article on what we're gonna be talking about today, photo chats. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in. We all have access to digital photos all the time. And it really is like having math at your fingertips. So I'm gonna ask you all to open your phone to the last photo that you took and take a look at it. Do you see math? And I would love for you all to please share with us in the chat, what kinds of math can you find in that recent photo? What kinds of math can you find? And while you're taking a look and thinking about that, I'm wondering if it's okay if Janine and I share a recent photo from our phone just to get the conversation started. So here is a, here's a photo from my, a recent photo from my phone. So here you see, here's my daughter and my niece at the farmer's market. And hmm, let me see, what kinds of math do I see, Janine? Well, I see two rows of corn, an unhusked row at the top and a husked row on the bottom. And behind that row, I see a stack, kind of a tall pyramid shaped stack of corn with the husks on. And I see a big, heavy, juicy watermelon. Um, and ooh, I'm actually noticing patterns of stripes on the watermelon skin. Oh, there's, there's actually a lot to talk about in just that one photo. Uh, Janine, tell us about this lovely photo that you've shared with us. Oh, yeah, I have to brag. This is my daughter who just graduated from high school um, with my parents. And what strikes me uh, when I look at this photo is the difference in height. I can compare how tall they are. And I'm also noticing the patterns on my mom's sweater and on the bricks. And as I look in the chat, I'm seeing that ideas about patterns and colors and counting and shapes. Wow. Um, it is just coming up um, for everybody. And pictures about babies, pictures about baseball, trees, flowers, mm -hmm. bushes. They're seeing math in, in all of these photos that they have on their phone. Absolutely. One of the things I want everybody to think about as you're looking at these photos is why is it important for us to put language to these, to these attributes, to these mathematical structures or maybe relationships that you're noticing in your photos? Why might it be important to say them out loud or talk about them? Um, hmm, something to ponder as we, as we continue. Great. 
Well, we asked you to take out your phones, but please do put them away because we are gonna <laughs> we're gonna dive in. We have a jam-packed session for you today. Um, we are gonna look at how mathematical conversation develops from birth to eight. So even before children are verbal, um, there are exchanges that happen that can help kids become sensitive and tuned into the math that is in everyday life. Um, we're going to think about how digital photos can support these kinds of meaningful, relevant conversations with children and learn about a progression of what we call photo chats mm -hmm. that starts um, very open-ended and becomes increasingly precise as children go up through the grades. We're going to get all the way through third grade, so we're going the whole developmental spectrum today. And we have lots of resources to get you started. Um, at the top of the chat was um, a handout. And I'm going to ask Naomi if, if you would drop that handout in the chat um, again. Um, that is going to have a link to all the resources, um, either things we've developed or things online, all in one handy place. It's, all, it's hyperlinked for you so that you can really mm -hmm. grab all these resources and get started. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pass it back to you. Um, Rocky, where, where does mathematical conversation begin? You know what? Let's begin at the beginning. And by beginning, I mean birth. Um, so let's think about how does the development of mathematical thinking, how is it nurtured by a caregiver during the first three years of life? So what you're looking at are three bands of colors. Let's start with infants which is represented by the red band on the top left. Infants rely heavily on their perceptions. They are bombarded with sensory information and they're collecting data on that, right? We've all witnessed infants put everything in their mouth, right? That's them collecting data on texture and touch and taste. How do infants then make sense of these perceptions? How do they make sense of all that sensory input? Well, this is where the caregiver's role is so vital because when a loving caregiver layers language on top of these sensory experiences, well, then that's when a connection is made. So I want you to imagine maybe a four month old sliding an ice cube on the ground. And maybe a caregiver says, oh, that ice cube feels slippery and cold. With repeated sensory experiences like that, the infant begins to gradually build their receptive understanding. And they start to build a bank of vocabulary or phrases in their home language. And so that's how it really begins with infancy. Let's move across this trajectory. And now I want you to think about this green band. And the green band represents more or less toddlerhood, um, this between one to two years of age around. And you, we all know this is when toddlers really experience a new sense of agency, right? They're crawling, maybe they're walking, and they have such an active role in exploring the world. And they are ready to receive the world, right? They are just soaking up all of the sensory input. And for months and months, a nurturing caregiver has been finding key moments where they're able to layer some language, just like we talked about with infancy, onto a repeated sensory experience. And so then the toddler continues to build this bank of receptive vocabulary and maybe phrases and slowly over time they begin to move towards this idea of productive or expressive understanding and that is this final blue band which i want you all to think about as twos or maybe twos between two and three year olds roughly um, and this is represented as a and of course they continue, right? We know that twos continue to benefit from sensory experiences. They continue to benefit from a caring, a loving caregiver layer language onto their experiences. And with all of these experiences, they undergo a huge cognitive leap, which is they begin to express themselves. They begin to babble and coo and point and talk. And this is how the youngest mathematicians began to develop their real mathematical thinking. And so you can see 
as children began this really exciting phase of productive um, expressive understanding, we finally get a window into what they're thinking about. Um, and it's such an exciting um, stage of development. So hopefully this gives you all a little context of how you can think about this for the youngest learners, zero, zero to three. And we actually have a video that we wanna show you, which we think um, exemplifies a really beautiful moment where an infant is gaining a beautiful window into their mathematical thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and share that video with you all. And the cow, the cow says moo. That's the sound the cow makes. Uh, yes, I like feeling that too because it's so soft. You're going to turn the page? Good. Yes, soft. Should up? Yeah, because I know, and you can also... Becky, how's it. that video coming? Let's stick your finger and feel around it. Yeah. Did you see the video? No? The video's working? Yes, I can hear it. Okay, I'm going to... Oh. Yeah, I touched it. Oh, yes. I like the way it feels. Let's see what's on the other page. It's a dog. His name is Bob. Let's see what Bob's paw feels like. Wow. What does it feel? It feels rough. Yes, it's a little rough. That's Bob the dog. There you go. Oh, look at Mr. Duck. It's fluffy and soft. Did you see? Duck, you see his eyes? Yes, it's the yellow duck. Did you? Yeah, that's his wing. He uses his wing to help him when he's in the water. Did you see that? That's his eye, just like the duck. <gasps> We're through. Are you going to try again? I hope you all were able to see and hear that video clearly. Did that go okay, Janine? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, you can go back to sharing. I, I have a computer restart happening, so I, I'll get this guys up yeah. as soon as we can. But if you want to go ahead, um, or if you want to share that. Sure. And I noticed somebody asked a really good question in the chat, which is the links didn't work on the PDF. We can take care of that. Thank you for letting us know. We'll make sure that we get those links active for you all because we want to make sure you have all these resources. Uh, so as you saw in that video, the caregiver really uses all of the perceptive, sensory, tactile elements in the book and then layers some really nice, precise language, right? In a really loving and gentle way. It's not overt or, um, you know, expecting the toddler to react. It's very playful. And that's what we mean by these kinds of experiences that we hope a zero to three-year-old can have um, with a caregiver. And we call this sort of an interaction, say what you see, and it is, exactly as it sounds. When you just tell young children what you're noticing, what's in your awareness, all of a sudden it comes alive for them. And so this kind of a powerful, intimate um, book reading on, on lap scenario it has been very well researched, right? These kinds of interactions that a caregiver or a family member has with an infant toddler or two is known as joint attention or shared attention. Um, and this has been well documented um, in research on early childhood. So it's really hopefully nothing new that is that you haven't heard of. But what I want you to think about is how this influences young children as mathematical thinkers. Share. Um, my PowerPoint, if you 
if you want me to. I'm ready to go. Okay, go ahead. So sorry about that. No problem. Technical have technical issues always happen. Uh huh. And Amanda in the chat noticed the caregiver was following the child's lead and and really connected with the child. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully you all got a chance to listen to our colleagues Jackie Chen and Mary Hant Hinesbury, who presented much more in detail this idea of precursor math concepts for young children. And this is sort of just reiterating what we talked about, which is. You know, we're talking about digital photos today in our session, but when you think about zero to three, we are not, you don't need a photo. You don't need any sort of a stimulus because their world is constantly offering them stimulus. And the role of the caregiver is, I think, what's so vital here, because as a caregiver, you're just looking for those moments where you want to be really intentional and be very sort of highlight for them what it is that they're experiencing. And you're just layering a language. This can happen um, in a routine during the day. It can happen with book reading, as we saw in the video. It can happen with diapering, which I'm sh I don't, that might be surprising, but diapering is a beautiful, intimate time that you can talk through what you're doing. Um, even hand washing, meal time whatever, it, it, there's just a multitude of opportunities. So in this scenario for this developmental span, we don't recommend using a photo. Um, we think that the world is rich enough um, to have these kinds of conversations. Um, and so Janine, I'm, in, I'm interested in finding out how might this look in a classroom? Yeah, so um, photo chats, we, we recommend that teachers start them as early as preschool. And that digital photo of a, of a real life scenario is one way to bring um, children's backgrounds, their funds of knowledge right into the classroom and help them connect it to math. So it, it does move into that two dimensional, but it represents to children images that they are curious about, that they may be familiar with um, and invites them to talk about them. So our first, question that we ask with photo chat are really two of the most powerful questions you can ask of children is what do you notice and what do you wonder and this kind of photo chat is meant to be open-ended uh, it is meant to invite all the voices in the classroom we welcome children to use their languages to bring their funds of knowledge and to talk about what they see and what they begin to develop the habit of of inquiry of having their own questions about the world. Um, and so we, th these are a couple um, pictures from classrooms here in Illinois. And you can see um, the teacher has pulled up a photo on, on her board and the kids are looking and talking um, and you can see some gestures that they're doing. So one of the things that we do um, with photo chat is support oral language development, developing that academic language that children need for mathematics. And so they, the, the word notice is not always in young children's vocabulary. And so we add the total physical response to help them notice. You might see, you might notice some of the children using that gesture to help them remember what the word notice means. And then you also see children going like this. This is our total physical response gesture for wonder. It helps us remember we're asking a question. It's something that we don't know, but we might want to know. And so you'll see as we engage in photo chats that we use that gesture to support language for our youngest learners. The best way to um, experience a photo chat is to do one because mm -hmm. while they can start with young children, they are um, compelling even for adults. And so we are going to invite some of our colleagues on, on stage with us. So Naomi, if you could bring on um, our colleagues, Jackie, Donna, and Rebecca. Um, we're going to do a photo chat with you, but they're going to be um, able to share their voices. You are able to share your ideas in the chat, 
and Rocky will be able to give voice to that in the conversation. But we wanted to give you a sense of what it's like in a classroom as we talk. Um, so while this could happen, um, this photo could be used with very young children to spark their curiosity. I'm gonna ask you and, and our colleagues, we're gonna bring our adult self to the conversation. So your own experiences, your own um, connections to what you see um, is what we would like to hear from you. So as we talk, we also um, invite wide participation by using gestures. So um, my friends who are on with me, if you have an idea to share, I'd like you to give me a thumbs up, make it a, you know high enough that I can see it in your video feed. If you hear something that you noticed as well, we're not gonna repeat it, but you can just signal to me like, hey, I saw that too, with using the me too. And that way we know um, we, can, we can make those connections across the conversation. And if you hear someone say something that you would like to add on to, we use this building symbol because one of the goals of photo chat is not to just talk and share your own ideas, it's to listen and build on other ideas. That is a real important norm in, in creating math discourse in your classroom. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up a, a photo and I invite everybody out there to take a moment and I'd like you to notice by looking very carefully what you see in this picture. Mm. And when you have something you like to share that you notice, and I see some smiles, I hope there's some <laughs> smiles out there um, at home because photo chats are meant to be fun and, um, and make you curious. So I'm seeing a thumbs up from you, Rebecca. Can you tell us what you notice in this picture? I notice um, a little girl in the background with her mouth in a circular, as if she's also trying to get a bite into that watermelon. I noticed that too. Would anyone like to build on, there are a lot of interesting facial expressions. Did anyone notice anything about the other children's faces? Jackie, you'd like to build on? Go ahead. I noticed the two boys while biting the watermelon in the middle also showed facial expressions of very hard work. Okay. Donna, I saw your thumb. Would you share what you noticed? Yeah, I noticed that there's two children that are eating watermelon and the center of the watermelon is missing. Maybe they've already eaten it out. But I think the thing that I noticed is unusual to me is the way the watermelon is sliced. It's sliced down the length of the watermelon and it's like a whole slice. So they're kind of eating out of the center. Um, Rocky, is there a new idea from the chat? Oh, we're not hearing you. A couple of people in the chat are noticing concentric circles. They're noticing that the watermelon skin has a circle and then the face inside of the watermelon has a smaller circle inside. Um, so multiple circular, circular shapes. Um, some people are noticing some things like two braids, um, three, four kids, um, some, some things like that. Oh, the chat is buzzing, Janine. There's so many things that people, I can't even keep up with all the things that people are noticing. Wow. Well, that shows you how, how a good picture really does get the conversation going. I'm going to ask our colleagues here in the studio if there's anything you want to add on or a different idea before we hear what you wonder about mm -hmm. this, this photo. Is there anything you want to add, Jackie? Go ahead, I see your thumb. I also noticed in the two boys who eat watermelon, their hands is different on the, mm -hmm. on the red, mm -hmm. the orange shirt boy and has the hand and left and right, and the green shirt boy has the hand up and down. 
You wanted to add on, Rocky? Yeah, somebody in the chat noticed that that watermelon seems very heavy because they're really using two hands to grip it. Um, and maybe what Jackie just said sparked that observation for them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a big piece of watermelon, that's for sure. So I'm wondering now what kind of questions you have. What do you wonder about this picture? When we look closely and notice things, it helps us ask good questions. So give me a thumbs up if you have something you wonder about this picture. Donna? Yeah, I'm wondering because I see a row of children that maybe they're sitting at a table. I'm wondering if this is a contest to see who can eat, you know, finish up the watermelon the quickest. Mm -hmm. And I see some people wondering in the in the chat too about whether this is some kind of a game or a contest. Go ahead, Jackie. What do you wonder? I wonder if Donna said this is a contest, why they start in the middle? That seems not a very efficient way to eat a big watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder how sticky their faces might be. Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead, Rocky. Something from the chat. Someone in the chat's also wondering, what about the seeds? They're wondering, are they spitting out the seeds? Are they collecting them? A lot of stress, people are stressed out about what the children are doing with the, with the seeds. <laughs> Good question. Um, any other wonderings that we have from, go ahead, Rebecca. Um, I noticed that there were some pieces of watermelon that don't look round mm -hmm. in the foreground. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if those and if those were why those were cut in a different or is is that what happens after you finish eating the round that you break it? Like how did they get there? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to stop there, but I want to thank you for looking closely and really noticing so many details in this curious picture and then and then sharing your wonderings about what we might like to know more about this situation. Um, for, for those of you um, who just experienced maybe your first kind of photo <laughs> notice and wonder, what, what did you notice about the kinds of things we were just engaging in? Mm -hmm. what, what, what was I doing as the facilitator of the conversation? Uh, and what were you doing? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and type in the chat if you have some ideas. And, and maybe Rocky, you can help, help um, give voice to those chats. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm wondering, uh, so someone right away noticed the TPR that you mentioned, which for those of you that don't know, that stands for total physical response. Why might we add a gesture to the conversation that we're having with, with this photo? Why isn't it enough to just let children speak? What might layering a gesture on top of that do? Um, and for, I may have missed it in the chat if somebody mentioned it already, but this is a really high quality strategy for dual language learners. And it's also just a really wonderful thing to offer all children. Um, and Janine mentioned earlier, if you don't know that word, notice what a great word to know. And why not add a layer, a gesture onto that to help further make sense of that word. Think about how infants, toddlers, and twos pick up language, right? We're really just stealing from how we all learn language. Um, anything else you're noticing in the chat, Janine? Rocky, someone said that um, I accepted and welcomed all the noticings and wonderings. And that is of starting photo chats with the questions, notice and wonder, because it is meant to welcome. And it's meant to be one of those low floor, high ceiling kind of activities where everybody can have something to say. Um, but there's also no limit because it's very open-ended and people can bring their own ideas. We, I have to tell the audience, we were hoping Jackie, who grew up in China, might recognize this as a, um, an autumn harvest festival where people eat 
um, the, the, the fruits of summer and often watermelon is one of those. But we, we also knew that it's summertime and, and many of you probably have, have stories or experiences eating watermelon. And so that it, it would activate some prior knowledge and it would feel hopefully relevant and interesting because you might have eaten watermelon, but maybe not like that ever before. Uh -huh. I think that's a really important point, Janine, that I hope everybody catches on to that you know your classroom community and culture better than anybody else. So you can really capitalize on that with these photo chats. Um, if you know that the Palatero man is coming by, or a person coming by to sell popsicles, and that's a really exciting feature for the kids after school, you should definitely snap a picture of that and talk about it um, in your photo chat. It's a really great way to bring culturally relevant um, images to your classroom. Right. right, and someone just mentioned the social emotional aspect of this. Mm. This is math, don't get me wrong. We're talking about attributes, we're abstracting things from from a everyday context, but it, it is almost as much or equally important that we are building to feel welcome and safe to talk because none, none of the other kinds of photo chats that become increasingly precise and, and increasingly mathematical are going to be successful if, if some of these talk norms aren't well established. Mm -hmm. So um, while we're going to advance on to some other kinds of photo chats, I want to encourage everyone, even if you teach second or third grade, begin here so that children really trust you, that you will listen to them and that they have a voice um, and that they have something to contribute to these conversations. Oh. Um, but as when children have this experience, then they're ready to, to have the next kind of question around mm -hmm. photos. And that is, what do you see that's the same? And what do you see that's different? And so we call this same and different because we want children to um, begin to think flexibly about what attribute you're considering may find, you may find similarity or you may find difference based on different attributes. So the attribute language that you have um, nurtured through notice and wonder mm -hmm. comes into play here, but by having two images, it is going to naturally invite comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, we stuck with the watermelon theme here. Mm -hmm. And so Rocky, if we show this image to children, what are some of the attributes we think they may begin to talk about in relationship? Because now we're we're upping the cognitive demand, right? Because we're now asking children to make a relationship. Absolutely. Well, one of the things I would anticipate kids would probably notice right off the bat is that they are both the same colors. I'm noticing the same color, red, green, black dots. Both are the same because they're cut in half. At least one of the objects is cut in half on both of them. But although they are the same because they're both watermelon, they're different because one is a ginormous, real, actual fruit watermelon, and the other is a smaller cupcake disguised as a watermelon. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that kids would be excited to talk about that and maybe eat some of these. Right, right. And, and we have to be aware of the, the complexity of language mm -hmm. to bring two things in relationship to there's more complex sentence structure to say, these two are the same because, but they are different because those kinds of structures, or you could say, although they're the same because they both look like watermelon, they're different because one's a cupcake and one's a real watermelon. Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful that I just mm -hmm. said. Uh -huh. So it, bringing things into relationship increases the language demand. And so this is a place with young younger children and English learners where having those sentence frames and helping them begin to develop comparison language is really important because it not only helps them express what they see, it formalizes that relationship. And we know that language is, is the other side of the mathematical coin. And so we wanna be developing both in tandem. Um, 
I also want to point out how, well, this is still open-ended, of course. There's lots of things that we still can notice and we can, kids still love to wonder that that always, you know, doesn't, doesn't ever go away. Mm -hmm. By having um, a bit of a more structure in this kind of a photo chat, what happens is the comparison drives precision. So in this kind of photo chat, you are more likely to hear children begin to talk about quantity. That is one of the attributes, of course, we want kids to be tuning into um, in, their, in their lives and in, in math. And the, the comparison is going to start to bring that to light. And so in, in this particular case, kids might be interested in the number of seeds, for example. Mm -hmm. Hard to tell um, exactly, but all humans have this approximate number sense. So visually, we can say there are more seeds in picture B mm -hmm. than in A. We don't know exactly, but we can perceive that difference. Mm -hmm. There are also small quantities in, the, in these pictures that we can tell exactly. Picture A has three pieces. Picture B has two pieces. And those are things that young children can even subitize. They can tune in to that, that attribute of quantity. I'm going to show you another kind of example. Um, we have a picture of elephants and mice. And there are a lot of things we can notice that are very different about these two pictures and different about these animals. But I know we all can see it. <laughs> we can see the, the threeness that in terms of the size of the set, these are equivalent. We see the three elephants and the three mice. And so do young children, because as a kind of a rule of thumb, children can, can subitize, instantly see those small sets about uh, to match the, their ages. So, you know, if they're two, they can tell the difference between one and two. By the age of three, they can subitize three and up to four. Beyond four, quantities need to be arranged in order to subitize them. But this kind of photo chat is building the visual number sense that we want all children to have and doing it in this really kind of playful and open-ended way. So once we start focusing on quantity and hear kids, you know, seeing and, and naming these small sets, we know it's time to move on to another kind of question. Ooh. And you know what? Yes. So this is the natural sequence after a notice and wonder and same and different. Just as Janine said, children are going to notice how many of what. And actually, some of you already had question, had noticings about quantities in our previous two photo chats, which is great, which is fine. Um, sometimes you'll see kids gravitate towards that. But what you're going to notice in the next photo chat that we're going to bring our colleagues actually back on to um, have sort of a model for you all is that I want you to think about the photo that we chose and why maybe we chose that photo. Because one of the big ideas for young children, as Janine mentioned, is that quantity is just an attribute of a set of objects and that we can use number names to name those specific quantities. Um, and why not give kids an opportunity to talk about those in a classroom community? Um, so let's try it out together. All right, so you're gonna take a look and I'm gonna ask my um, colleagues to come back on stage, uh, Rebecca, Jackie, and Donna. And we have for you a new photo to take a look at. So I want you to take a moment, um, those of you that are on stage and in the chat, take a look at what you notice in the photo. I'm wondering how many of what do you see? How many of what do you see? Think of a quantity, the number and its unit, and give me a silent thumbs up when you're ready to share something that you notice. Jackie, what do you notice? What do you see? Go ahead, Jackie. Oh, I think you're muted. I noticed there are six stairs, six steps to get to the top. Yes. How did you see six steps? I see three and then the bottom and the three 
on the second layer. Ah, a lot. Many people in the chat saw that saw it that way too. Three, two sets of three steps. Hmm. What else? What else do you see, Donna? What do you see? I see eight towers. Ah, how how do you see eight towers? Well, I saw the three that are kind of at a diagonal in the back, and uh -huh. then I saw two on the right hand side, kind of together, and then two on the left hand side and then the one in the very front oh i see that now i see that i'm wondering did anybody else see it a different way jackie and then rebecca how did you see it yeah i saw eight two but i see the bottom line there's three i think there's one we could not see and the second mm -hmm. line we see four and then one the top so three four one Ah, now I see. Now I see what you're seeing. Rebecca, how did you see it? I, I saw five at the top uh -huh. on the top layer and three more. And so that's how I knew it was eight. Uh, Janine, what are you noticing? What are people noticing in the chat? Uh, they just lots, have three lots, different of, ways. lots of different quantities, but um, some we haven't heard of. Uh -huh. We Someone said one castle. Someone said two flags mm -hmm. and someone expressed um, the steps in a different way. Someone said two sets of three steps. Mm -hmm. so that is also six steps equivalent, but expressed differently. And I do see there that there's two levels of the steps. Mm -hmm. Define them as two different sets or one set. So again, that attribute yeah. language is key when we talk about how many, it's how many of what? What's the attribute that we're that we're defining the set by? Absolutely, you really have to push children to think. Tell us, well, how how did you see and what did you see? You can't just say two. I don't know what you see two of. Um, and I noticed that Jackie, Rebecca, and Donna they all saw eight sand towers. Some saw nine, depending on if you can see that one in the corner different ways. That's so interesting, but there's still the same amount, no matter which way that you all saw it. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Anything else? Any last noticings that you want to share with us before we um, wrap this up? Okay. I just was wondering how many grains of sand. <laughs> that would be a number of very, very hard to I was plant. wondering if somebody was going to say that. Um, right? An infinite almost amount of sand. So I'm wondering if those people in the audience maybe caught on some of the instructional strategies that I was trying to do as the facilitator of this photo chat. Um, of course, you all noticed that there were numbers and units to discuss, right? It's very that we talked about how important it is to not just say, I see five or I see two. We really need to know the unit of what the quantity is. Um, spatial arrangement was a really big part of this photo. And I really tried hard to bring that out. I wanted the, the group to see different ways to see the eight towers, the eight sand towers. There was a little bit of structure in this photo as well, right? There was some symmetry that your class, you're going to be shocked by what kids notice, Janine, right? One of the things that's so exciting is when you do with this with kids, they notice things that you don't notice and it brings up a whole new conversation. Um, there were number relationships happening in that conversation. People saw eight, five, and three or four and four. Um, and I got to hear different ways that people were approaching um, the picture. I got to see how they approach eight in more than one way. And there's, of course, multiple points of entry. Entry. If you only notice two flags, that's OK. You're going to benefit from the rest of your classmates talking about the other things right. that they notice. Right. And, and I notice how um, it wasn't about finding a grand total. The picture invited many different quantities. There wasn't like one right answer. Yeah. And that's so welcoming to children because they know, they, they can sniff it out. <laughs> if there's one right answer and, and, and that they know that's what you're going for, yeah. this really did invite a lot of different quantities to be seen. And so that's that flexible, that visual number sense. And 
uh, is open-ended still. Yeah. Even though there are right answers, there are many right answers and children have to justify how they, how they see those quantities. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And because it's in a photo and often, at least in the classroom setting, you know, it, it's on display, it discourages counting one by one. And that is really one of the powerful things about using these visual images is that it, it promotes unitizing. So some people call this kind of a number chat or kind of um, math talk a unit chat because the how many of what gets at mm -hmm. what is the unit we're counting. And so if you just Google hashtag unit chat, mm -hmm. here's a screenshot of some of the beautiful images that are out there. I mean, that's the gift of the internet and digital photography. There are so many resources at your fingertips to have these conversations. And, and this is really, if, if we've got first and second and third grade teachers out there, this is how photo chat grows with your students because we want to take students from seeing quantities as collections of ones. That's what, what the younger children are, are doing when they are just seeing ones to helping them unitize those small groups. So seeing the two, seeing the three, building that, that vision of supertizing, of kind of chunking the smaller quantities within a larger quantity is so critical for understanding eventually um, place value. So helping them eventually unitize in tens. Often we kind of skip that stage. As soon as kids can count to 10, we say, great, make groups of 10 and count your tens and your ones. Yeah. Well, kids don't understand that as a unit without understanding some of those small supertizable units as counting it as one thing. And the, and the, the visual photos do such a beautiful job of supporting that. So we really encourage um, to, to start the how many of what kinds of photo chats in preschool with small quantities. And so we share, and again, we'll make sure that the links work, um, but we've got, a, we've got starter albums for you. And we've got an album just with images of quantities between one and five, and then we have up to 10, and then we have up to 20. And you can find things online for um, all kinds of um, equal size groups yeah. um, out there. So we have one last um, photo chat question to ask. And I see that this has already come up in the chat. So <laughs> real rocky that people already know about this resource. Tell us about this question that we can ask about a photo. Yes. We, our audience actually brought this up earlier and I'm so excited that you all did. So this is the last sequence in our photo chat that we're gonna present to you all. It's called, which one doesn't belong? For short, W-O-D-B, for those of you that are um, familiar. And it's created by, um, I think, da Christ Christopher Danielson, who developed actually a book um, named off of this. And for those of you that aren't aware, it's just an image with four quadrants and it really promotes children to rationalize which one doesn't belong. And of course, it's a little tongue in cheek, right? Because there's a reason you can justify for each one not belonging. So you can imagine how much conversation it pulls out of children when they have to explain their thinking about why a certain image in the quadrant doesn't belong. Um, and we actually have an example, right, Ginny, from a fourth grade classroom who tried this out. This is an example of which one doesn't belong. So this was actually, we have actually the words from the fourth graders of their justification for why each one of these might not belong. So let's see which one. Um, I wish we had time for the people to do it in the chat, but we are, <laughs> we are out of time. So we're going to just share with you all what they said. So for the first one, a student said, well, the first one doesn't belong because it's the only one that doesn't say maximum. And it's the only one that doesn't have any zeros. Let's see what someone else said. So they said, oh, well, B doesn't belong because the, hun the hundred, because it's too much and never seen it. Um, let's see what C, why C doesn't belong. 40, because on the bottom it says kilometers, which stands for, sorry, KM, which stands for kilometers, and kilometer is measurement. And then finally, a student said that actually D doesn't belong, right? The maximum 70, 
because it's the only one that's a multiple of seven. So varying levels of sophistication of rationalization, but like we said, multiple points of entry, right? We want to um, listen to what kids have to say and why. And the, the emphasis is on why, right? Not so much on which one you picked, which is why it fits so naturally with photo chat. Great. So that was a that was a race through um, the developmental spectrum, but we we kind of wanted to bring it all together um, in this developmental progression. That that's what we do at Erickson, and you know these these kinds of math talk routines are out there on the web. So you know there are a lot of resources we've shared. You know some of the our favorites we've curated for you. Um, uh, what we would like to contribute to um, this conversation is thinking about these conversations in a developmental way and, and starting with that joint attention and saying what you see as early as infancy and toddlerhood, how do you develop these talk routines as a, ru as a routine? And I, I want to emphasize that, Rocky. I don't know that we, we brought that up, but the, the, the power in photo chats is in the regularity. And yeah. indeed, you know, children come to expect these and, and miss them if you have a busy day and you skip it. Um, because the, the habit of mind and the talk skills that develop um, take time. And so that's why we really encourage everyone to start with notice and wonder. Um, that's where you are gonna build the norms and mm -hmm. Uh, the vocabulary to talk about attribute and then begin to have conversations with these questions that become more and more mathematically focused mm -hmm. that will help children really look for and make use of structure yeah. as the photos themselves become a little bit more structured. Um, and, and obviously, which one doesn't belong? We sort of save that um, for the last because of the complexity. When you have four photos that you're putting in relationship to one another, the language demands go up and just the, the cognitive load of holding all those relationships at once. Then mm -hmm. kids have experience with some of these other conversations that can happen much more naturally and they're prepared for it. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't dive in, you know, if you're a kindergarten teacher, I wouldn't dive in with which one doesn't belong until your students have had some experience with, with these talk norms and some of the other kinds of questions you can ask with photos. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing I just wanted to say is, of course, there's all kinds of opportunities that you all are engaging in with math. But what's special about what we're presenting today is that it's living in the world. So children at recess will start talking to each other about the furry caterpillar that they find and what they notice and what they're wondering. It will become a habit of mind if it's a routine in your classroom. Um, but I know we have a couple last things that we want to share. So I'm passing yeah, yeah. Well, we just wanted to um... To, from our experience working with early childhood teachers in across the state of Illinois, we've seen this come alive in classrooms in a way that has been really exciting yeah. I mean, for us, but really for the teachers, because yeah. they're saying they hear from more of their students than ever before. They know their students more than ever before, because more, more, um, more children are participating in the conversation. So the benefits that we see kind of fall into some buckets. So one is that this is a very economical routine because it builds so many skills at once, the conversation and reciprocal communication, which coming out of the pandemic has never been more important. We have to give children the opportunity to build these skills. Absolutely. It, um, develops academic language that helps formalize mathematical thinking, builds visual number sense. And this is really where the math practice standards live. I mean, they're all here. <laughs> they're, they're, they're baked in. Mm -hmm. It centers children's ways of knowing. So that means that this is a routine that's accessible and it welcomes children to be involved. It motivates them and it sends positive messages about math that math is belongs to all of us that it is in our everyday life and it is math is a, being curious wanting to make sense wondering and asking questions mm -hmm. and it can be playful and joyful yeah. and that that's I mean we can't stress that enough mm -hmm. that at the end of the day 
it's fun. Yeah, this kind, yeah, this kind of um, photo chat is meant to really help kids see math in their life and see themselves as mathematicians. But I will say it doesn't stop with math. <laughs> the spillover effect makes this even more impactful that these are questions that kids take with them on field trips. They mm -hmm. take it to science. Here's a kindergarten wonder wall that, um, in one of the classrooms mm -hmm. where we work. Students start asking the teacher to take photos. Teacher, come take a picture of what I built in the block corner for a photo chat. Yeah. Or they bring in, teachers hand the iPads to the kids and the kids take photos. So now they have, they, they've internalized this lens of, I can see math in my world. Absolutely. And then the last powerful application is re-engagement with student work. So Absolutely. when you want kids to look at each other's strategies, mm -hmm. the question of what do you notice? What do you wonder? How is this strategy and this strategy the same? And how is it different? These questions are productive ways to open up each other's work in a safe way for that kind of re-engagement experience. So these talk moves just kind of have that ripple effect across your day in your classroom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and yes, um, we are so excited about the amount of resources that we have to share with you all. I apologize about the links. We're going to work on that. I, and, and at the end, um, Naomi, maybe you can let us know how we can make sure that everybody here gets all of those links. Um, but we have posters to share with you all. Um, we've even written photo chat protocols for every each individual photo chat except for which one doesn't belong, um, so that you don't need to remember everything from the session today. We have that, all these sort of, basically a photo chat 101 manual for you all to rely on. Um, we have a planning template. We even have, like Janine said, a starter kit of photo, a photo album that you can get started with um, and take a look at some of the photos that we've collected. Um, and we have also just links from other people. We, we didn't create this, um, Protocol. We didn't create photo chats with this idea of notice and wondering. Like that's been around for a while. What we've done is give it a mathematical focus and a developmental uh, trajectory. So we're also sharing what other people have um, contributed to. Um, I think that's that's it. You know, it was like a race to the finish line. Ooh. We do have a couple minutes for questions. So, um, please type it in the anything in the chat because we're. We're happy to share from our experiences. And I also want to call out uh, Donna, our colleague in the back, has been watching the Q&A. So um, if there's anything, Donna, that came up there that you'd like us to address, um, we, can, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But we definitely want to make sure that we say thank you. Yeah. This is one of our favorite photos, by the way. <laughs> Makes me great how many of what um, conversation. Um, and just invite you to visit us online. Um, we have lots of early math resources that we would love to share. And we really hope we've inspired you to take some digital photos this summer in the fun things that you're doing and bring them to your classroom and, and invite your students to do the same because the best photos are really the ones that come from your school community and your families and get kids talking about math. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We know you have a full day of learning ahead um, and we are going to stick around if you have any questions. Um, and Naomi, if you are here, maybe you can let us know how to better share that PDF with people so that they have all the links. Yeah, and I wonder if it has something to do with um, dropping it in the chat, because the 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 links the links work for me. So I wonder if yeah. we get get it from straight from Dropbox if that that will work because it, it is all hyperlinked. Mm -hmm. Want to make your life easier? So it might just be a function of somehow it's not active in the in the when it's in the chat. Yeah. But we, yeah, we want you to have that because we want you to have access to all those resources um, so you can have the photos. And somebody did ask earlier about the gestures. You made a wonderful photo album 
where she's modeling the gestures um, that, you know, same and different and what do you notice? Mm -hmm. um, and so that is one of those resources that we've shared. So if you'd like to incorporate some of that TPR in your classroom, we really recommend it. It's one way to really welcome more voices and um, hear from more kids. All right. Great. So I see a few things in the chat that people are getting it from Dropbox and that- Oh, good. Oh, good. That makes me so Oh, wait, no, or it's not working. It's working for some people. Oh, boy. Okay. Yay, and we have some Go Chicago. Woohoo! Well, thank you, guys. It's so, so fun to share this. I hope, I hope you get a sense of our excitement because we've seen excitement in classrooms. Oh, definitely. Oh, yes, we, we had a very hard time um, making this a one hour presentation. It really pushed, it really pushed us to be concise. We obviously have so much that we could talk about with photo chats. Um, so we're really excited that it resonated. I'm um, Janine, the photo, the chat was buzzing with people excited to get back in the classroom to try it. Um, That's great. So happy. Fantastic. So do we end the session, Naomi? Yeah, good question. Yes. Okay. I don't see any more questions, so I think we'll sign off. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us, everyone.